Hello, and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the characteristics of exponential functions and also how to graph them. Now, to do this, I'm going to take a look at an example called the epidemic example. So let's say that I, Mrs. Law, is sick and I come to school. On the first day, I infect two people. On the second day, those two people each infect two more people. If this pattern continues, how many people are infected on day five? So let's fill in this chart uh, to look for a pattern. So on day zero, only I am infected, so I'm gonna put one. On day one, I go to school and I infect two people. Then on day two, those two people each infect two more people. So that means they infect four people. So let's fill in the rest of the chart for days three, four, and five. So on day three, those four people each infect two people. So we get eight, and then 16, and then 32. So we can see that each day the numbers are doubling. So let's take um, these numbers and we're going to graph them on this grid on the right. All right, so we're going to spread out the number of days on the bottom. So 0, 1, 2, 3, four and five and I'm going to put time on my x-axis which is in days and then on my y-axis I'm going to skip count by fours And this is the number of newly infected. Okay. So let's plot my six points. So zero is one. And you can do this too. So pause the video now so that you can take a little bit of time to create your graph. Now, hopefully your graph is a little bit, uh, not as squiggly as mine. So you can see that the graph goes up very, very rapidly. Now, the next thing that I want to do and show you is to write the exponential form of these values. So let's fill in the third column of this chart. So another way to say one Actually, let's skip that one. Actually, let's go to the second number. So two, two is the same as two to the power of one. Four is two squared, eight is two cubed, and so on. So therefore we can see that one is the same as two to the power of zero. So let's say that we have an X number of days and Y people were newly affected then we can say that the exponential form would be 2 to the power of x, which is the number of days. So the equation we can write here is y is equal to 2 to the power of x. So recall, 2 is the base, x is the exponent. So this is called an exponential function. because it has the form y equals c to the power of x. And it's an exponential function because the variable is in the exponent as opposed to having it on the base, which you've seen before lots of times. So the next thing we're gonna take a look at is how to graph um, or what the general graph of an exponential function looks like. So we have two cases here. The first one is y equals c to the power of x, where c is greater than one. So if the base is greater than one, then we have an exponential function which starts on the bottom and then it swoops up. 
So the domain is all real numbers. The range for this base graph is greater than zero. There are no x-intercepts. There is a y-intercept of zero, one. So this point here is actually one. And then there's an asymptote, which is y equals zero. So let's draw that in. So we have a horizontal asymptote here. Now, if we have the same function, y equals c to the power of x, but now c is a number between 0 and 1, now the graph swoops down. The domain is still all real numbers. The range is still greater than 0. We don't have any x-intercepts. We still have the y-intercept of 0, 1, which is right here. And we still have the same asymptote of y equals 0, which we'll draw in. So there isn't any difference um, in terms of the properties of the two functions. However, when c is greater than 1 or when the base is greater than 1, you do have to remember the graph moves up. But if the base is between 0 and 1, the graph actually slopes down or moves down, we can also see. Okay, next we're going to take a look at some transformations of this graph. So we can graph exponential functions using transformations uh, by comparing the exponential function in this form, which seems quite complicated, and comparing it to the base, y equals c to the x, which I'll call the base function. All right, so to recall, since we haven't done this for a while, um, C is our base. Oops. Okay, and the number in the front, A, that affects our vertical values. So this gives us a vertical stretch by a factor of the absolute value of A. Now, if A is negative, we need to reflect the graph over the x-axis. Okay. The k value also affects the vertical, and this is our vertical translation. Then we have the two values that are beside the x, which is the in the exponent. So the b, that gives us our horizontal stretch. And that's by, remember, 1 over b in absolute. And again, if it's negative, we reflect over the y-axis this time. And lastly, we have the h value. Notice that by default, it's x minus h. That's kind of our base. So this gives us our horizontal translation, moving from side to side. So let's take a look at an example. So we have our base function, y equals 1 third to the power of x. You want to get the graph of 1 third to the power of x plus 4 minus 2. Now, we can just plug in points into the second equation, but I also want to show you just how to use transformations. So, I'm going to create a table for my original. So, I'm just going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 as my points. So, plugging in negative 2, I get 9, because remember, the negative exponent means that we need to flip um, the base. So, now it will be 3 to the power of 2. Negative 1, we're going to get 3. 0 is 1. 1 is 1 third. And 
2 is 1 ninth. Okay, so now we're going to transform these points. So just to recall, if you want to use mapping notation, we can say that all of our x values compared to the original, it has been moved over to the left. So we're going to take all our x values and subtract 4. And then all my y values, I'm going to subtract 2. So when I do this, I'm going to get negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3. And then for the y values, I get 7, 1, negative 1, negative 1, and 2 thirds. I didn't choose to do one more point because the numbers are quite small. But if you would like, we also get negative 2. And then we also get negative 1. Oops. And 8 ninths. All right. So graphing these points, uh, you can pause the video now to do the graphing on your own. All right, so here we have the graph. Now what I've left out, which I want to draw with you, is the asymptote. So we can see that the graph really, really gets close to negative two down here. So our asymptote is actually going to be y equals negative two. So I'm going to draw that in. So I have an asymptote of y equals negative two. And we can see the domain is all real numbers. The range, the graph is greater than negative two. And then for the y-intercept, to actually find that, you'll have to plug in x is 0 into the equation up here. And then we're going to get 1 over 81 minus 2. So that's going to be negative 1 and 80 over 81. All right, to finish off, let's get you to try this question down here under your turn. And if you want, you don't have to do the transformation, but you can directly draw and fill in the table for the second function, which I will do down here. Now you might be wondering what numbers do you start with? So you want to start with something that will make your exponent to be zero. So in this case, x would have to be three. And then I always place that into the middle of my table. And then I can choose two numbers on either side of three to get my other values for y. So pause the video now, try to do the whole question, and then play it back so you can check your answer. All right, so here's the graph that you should have gotten. Now, when you're drawing your graph, be really, really careful to not actually cross where the asymptote is. So in this question, uh, the asymptote is y is equal to 1. Notice that it's actually based on this number at the back where the vertical translation is. And then to help us, and to guide us, so that we do know that there's an asymptote there, I do want you to draw in the asymptote so that we can see it. And that's how you graph an exponential function.